The linked list is a milestone of sorts for most programmers uh, because it marks a transition. You have mastered, uh, by the time you get to the linked list, most of the fundamental data and control structures. And now you have branched into the area of using dynamic data structures. And the linked list uh, in creating the nodes, managing the process of the nodes, accessing the data within them, all those kinds of things brings all of your knowledge together. So before we begin the process of looking at the linked list, let's see if we can understand what it is. A linked list is an in-memory data structure, and it is composed of a chain of linked structures. Now these structures take the form of a thing called a node. And each one of these nodes is a self-contained piece of data. Uh, each of these nodes contains uh, some payload data, whatever it might be, uh, and then uses a pointer that is also self-contained to point on to the next node in the linked list. Each node is made up of two parts, the payload or the data portion of the node and then the link portion. The link portion is going to be a pointer of the node data type and I'll show you that in just a second. So the data type can be anything that you want. Yeah, you, know, you, can, you can put anything at all uh, within the data portion of your linked list. The link must point to a very specific data type and we'll, we'll get to that in just a sec. By utilizing that pointer link, we're able to take this node and point it to the very next node in memory, wherever it is, and then point that node to the following node, and so on and so on and so on. This chain of nodes is not only flexible, uh, but we can treat it in any number of different ways. We can, uh, for example, order the list. We could insert a new node right in between two other ones uh, and go so A, B, C, D, E, F. We could um, add additional links or additional pointers and we could travel through the list in one direction and turn around and travel through the list in another direction by simply following the nodes uh, pointer by pointer. So when we look at the list, uh, we won't see these little boxes in memory, but this gives us a good graphic representation of what the linked list is all about. Each node uh, is, that, is a container containing the payload data with that uh, pointer that points on to the very next. You'll see that null down at the very last node. That is usually the indicator that tells our program this is the last node in the list. In other words, there, there, are, there is no pointer forward, and so that indicates that there are no other nodes that follow the very last node. We will also have a a variable within the list, usually called head or root, depending on, uh, on on who's written your material. And that head contains a pointer to the very first node. So if I look at that head variable and the value is null, that tells me that there are no nodes in the list. Uh, but if I look at the head variable and it contains, like we see here, 0040, I know that's the address of the very first node and I can go to the very first node to find out if there is a second and so on and so on and so on. The head or the root variable is critical to your program. If you lose your head, uh, you've lost your list because there is no other way to go back and find it in memory. So you have to be very cognizant when you're programming the linked list of what's happening with the head. If there's a possibility that it can be overwritten, if there's a possibility it could be deleted, or, or whatever the case may be, you want to be very careful to protect that variable. Once we have the address of the first node, so our 0040 points us there, then we simply read the pointer and then our program will 
move in memory to that specific memory location because remember our pointer contains a memory address and so it will contain the first uh, the first byte of the next node and then we can read the next node and the next node and the next node all the way until we get to the end of the list so conceptually the linked list is very simple it also forms the basis of a number of different uh, data structures. Trees are built in this way. Uh, dual pointer lists are, are built in this way. Uh, dynamic arrays can be, can be configured in this way. So there are a lot of things that you can do with the linked list. In the next video, we will look at specifically, step by step, how to code your linked list. When you first start thinking about writing the code for your very first linked list, it can be a little daunting. You have an awful lot of pointers all of a sudden, and you have all these nodes that are out in memory somewhere that you can't precisely place your hand on because you don't know the address where they're the data is actually located. Uh, but don't be scared, it's really an easy process and we're going to walk through it um, one instruction at a time so that you can get a, a clear picture of what's going to be involved in it. The first thing that you have to do is to define the node uh, that you're going to be working with and, and you do that using the struct or the structure. This is a special kind of a structure, and I'm going to show you why in just a second. But basically, you're going to define your payload, and then you see the pointer down there at the bottom, the asterisk next. And together, those are going to carry your data uh, yeah, as you lay it out in memory. The reason I say this is a special kind of a node is because it is self-referencing. And that means that you define a pointer within the structure that is of the type of the structure. So if you see the the compact disk record that we're defining in front of you, notice that the pointer is to a type of compact disk. Uh, and, and that becomes the pointer to the next node. And so your node pointer is always going to be the same data type as your structure type. So lock that in first and foremost. So once you've defined this structure, then we can begin the actual coding or the instructions that are necessary to create and utilize the linked list. The next thing we do is declare our root or our head variable, uh, and it too has to be a type of the the structure so I'm gonna have a pointer to a structure called uh, in this case book and uh, I'm going to initialize it to null now remember that null tells us that our linked list is empty so the very first thing we do is declare that pointer variable use the dereferencing operator and uh, assign that the value of null so that uh, the very first time we operate the program or execute the program, it's going to be told that the linked list is actually null. Okay, so we have um, our first instruction. We have declared a separate variable of type um, type uh, book and uh, initialized it to null. Now we add a an empty node to the list. In order to begin inputting data to it, we have to create a, a new node um, that is empty. And so we're going to take and declare first a variable called new node and then when we want to utilize it we're going to dynamically allocate the memory so the new node variable will contain the address that the new operator returns 
So remember the new operator goes out, allocates memory, and then returns the pointer to that memory location. So in the second instruction that you see there, um, new book goes out and tries to allocate enough space, enough contiguous space for the size of the structure. Uh, when it is successful, it returns that address back to the pointer new node, uh, and then we can use that to add data to the list. If the operation is unsuccessful, if new cannot find space for whatever reason, it will return null. So just like when we're opening files, we need to verify that the file actually opened up. When we declare a dynamic variable, especially a node like this, we need to ensure that that dynamic allocation was successful. If it was not, we want to bypass that and make sure that um, make sure that we don't try to write memory out into um, undefined space because uh, we'll real quickly uh, crash our program. All right, so we create the new node and it is an empty node sitting out in this case at the address 0010. When we add data to a dynamic variable or a dynamic uh, data structure, we use what is called the arrow operator. If you remember when you were working with static structures, you use the dot operator. So if this, uh, if new node was a static structure, we would say new node dot ISBN, new node dot author. When you're working with dynamic data structures, you utilize the arrow operator, which is a dash and then the greater than symbol. So new node arrow ISBN equals and get the ISBN number, new node arrow author, Alan Hirsch, and so on and so on and so on. This is how we fill the payload of our new node. So that new node is sitting out in memory, the data items uh, are being applied to it, and all of that data that we want to assign into the list is being written into uh, into that node. So now out of memory, I have uh, a node, I have data assigned in that node, and the next step that I've taken, you see there, I have assigned the value of null to the next pointer. That tells the program that there are no nodes that follow 0010. That is the, the very end of the list. Now there's one new step that has to be taken and that is I need to take the address of my first node and I need to assign that back to head in order to connect my list back to my head um, variable. Uh, if I lose that or if I fail to accomplish this step, if I fail to do uh, what needs to be done, then what will happen is I will lose my list. I can create nodes all day long and it will not be, uh, it, it'll not be successful in maintaining the list. So you see what I've done now is once I've assigned the data uh, into the list, then I've gone and made an assignment of the pointer that's in new node to the pointer variable head. So head is now pointing to the first node in my list. Uh, another thing you're going to want to remember is that you only do that one time uh, with, with a simple linked list. Once you've done that, so this is an if-else structure. If no, uh, uh, head equals null, uh, then you will walk through this operation. If head doesn't equal null, then you don't want to reassign every new node to head. Otherwise, your list will be exactly one node long, uh, and that would be bad. Okay, so let's say we've added um, at least one element. We need to be able to get to the end of the linked list uh, because for our purposes right now we're only adding uh, new elements at the end of the list. And so you set up a loop that traverses the list, that walks the entire length of the list, 
and when it gets to that null, it camps on that on that node. So this list basically um, takes next pointer from head, so it starts at the beginning. And as long as next pointer doesn't equal null, it will continue to loop forward and follow the trail of pointers from item to item to item until it finds the very last node. Once it finds the last node and identifies the null pointer going forward, then it knows it's sitting on the very last node. You can go ahead and repeat the process, add new node, and then uh, write that item back to the end of the list. So gradually we just build up a list. We add elements, connect the pointers, add another element, connect up the pointers, and so on and so on. The one thing that you want to keep track of is the current pointer or the, the pointer of the, the node on which you're sitting so that you know where to go back to so that you can take the next pointer in the current node and point it to new node. So you have to reach back a little bit in order to do that last bit of assignment. And that's what you see there in red, current node equals next pointer. Okay, so we have created the list, we have added the nodes, we have connected them together. Um, those are all the steps you need. Now, if you were going to delete nodes, uh, well, then it would be a matter of taking a node, uh, deleting it from memory, and connecting the pointers up. So if you look at the example in front of you, we could conceivably take the node that is at 0020, delete it, and all I would have to do is take the forward pointer that is at 0010, uh, and change it from 0020 to 0030. And that would essentially link those two nodes together and the chain would continue on. If I delete the last node, then I change 0020, the pointer, to null. If I delete the first node, then I change my head pointer to point to 0020. So it's, it's very flexible once you have locked in your mind the basic structure of the length list. So now what I'm going to do in the next part of the video is uh, go out and bring up the actual code that will operate a linked list. And you'll see a lot of the things that you see here. And we'll go ahead and walk through the operation. We'll use the debugger so we can trace uh, the operations on the list. <laughs>
the head value and so that the loop can start from that point on. So we come down here into main and we have the menu structure. I've declared two pointers, uh, the head pointer initialized it to null and then my next pointer initialized that to null as well. Uh, run the menu uh, and then I can uh, go on and, and call the various functions uh, necessary. And actually that head pointer is not necessary, head is necessary, I'm sorry, next pointer is not necessary. I think that was there from the development phase of the program. All right, so we call add a node. So let's run down to there and have a look at that. Remember we have two different conditions when we add a node. Condition A is that the list is empty. So that will require that we not only declare a node, fill it with data, um, but also to write that node address, the very first node, write that address back to the head pointer. If head pointer is not equal to null, that means there are nodes in the list, then we need to loop until we find the end of the list and then add that data to, to that point. All right, so uh, here uh, are my two temporary variables that I will utilize during this process. I pass in in root or the head variable as a parameter. And so the first thing we do is ask to see if uh, in root equals null. So if it does, uh, that means the list is empty and I'm going to come down here and begin the process of declaring and filling a, uh, uh, a node. Uh, remember that when we use the new operator, we need to verify that that allocation was successful. So this construct right here combines two statements in one. Uh, the new operator creates a type of book passes the pointer back to in root and then we compare in root against null. So as long as it is not equal to null then we will come down and uh, uh, fill that up with data. So I, I assign next pointer the in root value so this first root right here and then go out and ask the user to input data uh, I use CN instead of getLine, that's why the book titles can only be one word. Uh, but it's good enough for demo purposes. All right, and then I put the title into the node, my, my new pointer. I put the title into the node, and then I go and uh, put um, my null pointer, because this is the very first node, uh, into, um, into the next pointer. Uh, if it had failed, I would pass a uh, error message back and, and get out of the program. Otherwise, I return my next pointer, which in this case is the head pointer. Now, if on the second, um, the second addition of a node, uh, the in root would not equal null, so it would skip all the way down here to this else. And so let me just scroll that up. Now we have a list that has members in it. Uh, it may have one, may have many members in here, but what we're going to do is loop from here to here to here to here until we get to the very last node which contains a next pointer that equals null. Once that is the case, then we store the previous pointer or that last pointer, that last node address, because uh, we're going to want to connect the last node to the new node and then go through that process again. Uh, allocate space, uh, assign a previous pointer to that, or I'm sorry, assign next pointer to previous pointer. So now I've connected those two nodes together and then go out and get the data from the user, put that in the node and then assign the forward pointer to null. And again, just return in root. It's really not necessary, but it makes the function consistent. Uh, it 
always has to return a, a type there. So that's real simple. Uh, just it, it, you repeat that process. Um, you're only going to do the first half, the if part of this process, one time. And then every other addition is going to fall through to the to the different the second data elements. When we want to print the list, uh, it's even simpler. We simply put the uh, send the root node in or the head node, go through and do the same thing. Uh, examine to see if it's null. If it's null, that means the list is empty and we send a message out. Otherwise, it loops based upon those forward pointers uh, until it hits a node that has a forward pointer that is null. Uh, just prints all those out onto the screen. So let's put a, uh, let's put a break point in here and we'll trace a couple of elements through the system. I'm going to put it in uh, add node so we can trace the process through here. Okay, we go through. I'll call print so you can see what happens there. So this is an empty list. Because it equaled null, it gave us the message empty list. All right, so we're going to add a node. So now we kick into the debugger. Okay, so we're going to examine the content of in root. If you look down here, in root equals null. And so it should fall into the if clause of the if else statement. And it does. It's going to go and now do the allocation using new. So we'll step one forward. You see that in root now has a hexadecimal address. Okay, so it has um, it, it has a place in memory that was successfully allocated. Unfortunately, you look at next, and next has some, some garbage in it. So you want to be real sure that you get that null assigned in there. So we'll step through. It asks for the title. We'll give it a title. Okay. And then I'm going to step through once more. And so now here's your first node that's sitting at, um, we'll just call it 70. It has the title contagious, its next pointer is set to null, and it's, it's sitting out there in memory. So that goes back, that returns back. And we'll add a second element so that we can see how this works. Okay, now as it comes in, you see that uh, in root now has the address, the 70, of our first node. So it's going to skip. Now it's no longer an empty list. So it skips down. It's going to store next pointer. So next pointer, this variable down here, is going to get the value of 70. Now remember, next pointer keeps track of the node that is just before your new node so that you can attach the new node to the end of the list. So it would loop, uh, except there's only one node, so it's not going to loop because it's already sitting on there. Uh, do that, do that. You've seen this. We add the item. so on and it returns it back does it again we'll run one more so that that loop can fire a couple times okay so now this loop again look starts at 70 which is our root goes into the loop Next pointer gets the pointer that's in next. So now you see next pointer points to 670. Goes back. Now that that next, the, the second element in the linked list, its pointer is 
uh, equal to null. You can see that right here. And uh, when we press F10, it's going to step forward. So it'll run that loop, no matter how long it is, all the way until it hits that very last element. Goes through, adds a new item, asks for a title, CSS, okay, and so on down the list. And it just keeps going like that all day long until you tell it to quit. quit a little bit too far but that's okay all right so the link list uh, is initially daunting now, only because it can be a challenge to debug. Everything you're working with is now in memory. It's out at hexadecimal addresses rather than uh, simply going to a variable and pointing to it. But just keep things uh, in mind. Understand that one thing connects to the next. So if you can find the head, you should be able to find the next and the next and the next after that. Um, if you get lost, turn on your debugger and walk through it just like we did here. Uh, you should be able to handle this without too much trouble. Um, just keep your pointers straight. Uh, have a good day and good luck with your coding.